Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Neil Haley Show. You can check me out on Twitter at Total Tutor, Neil S. Haley Facebook, LinkedIn, Neil Haley, Instagram, Total Tutor, Pinterest, Neil Haley, Google Plus, and also on Periscope at Total Tutor. You got to be on all those different social media, but you also got to be buzzing. As right now, I have my team tweeting out interviews all over the country on syndication, and this one where uh, some time, but because again, it's so fun getting to this TV studio. But I'm so proud of my co host. I guess, as Dave Cable and I talked about, she'll <laughs> probably be on her way out the door like we've had other people that have been my co hosts that have gone into greener pastures. Coach Karen Hall, ESPN analyst, mm -hmm. now, okay, WPL Hall of Famer, UNLV running rep, yes. all those things. And you have another amazing guest that. I connected with on radio three, four years okay. ago, but you know, it's 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 always great what he's doing yes. in the community and the story of his great great grandfather. Yes. Phenomenal. So go ahead and introduce. So we're excited to have Sean Gibson, the great grandson yes. of the Hall of Fame legend, Josh Gibson. So please welcome to the show. Thank you guys for having me. Neil, good seeing yeah, you again. Yeah. We met, met no, we're we're talking on the phone. Right? On the phone yeah. Karen, we know each other for a very, very long time. Yes, so indeed. Thank you yes. for having me. Sure. And, um, yeah, you know, first of all, I'm excited to be here. Um, as you mentioned, I'm the great grandson of Josh Gibson. Yes. You know, one of the things that um, our family, we do have a Josh Gibson Foundation. Mm -hmm. But before I get into that, a little bit about right. me, you know, I grew up in the city. Uh, born what and part raised, of the city? born mm -hmm. and raised in Pittsburgh. I grew up in the West End area. Okay. Went to Langley mm -hmm. High School, Pittsburgh Public School grad, okay. mm -hmm. and uh, went on to play basketball in college. Went to Robert Morris first. Mm -hmm. um, broke my wrist, had a little injury. Then I ended up transferring to Edinburgh University, and I graduated from Edinburgh University playing basketball, criminal justice degree. Okay. Nice. Um, so I had my degree in criminal justice, 1993 grad from Edinburgh, and how I got started with the foundation was. Um, my grandfather, Josh Gibson Jr., actually started playing the Negro Leagues too. And he's always be involved with what they call a Negro League circuit where they would take Negro League baseball players with MLB baseball players around the country to sign autographs. Okay. And I would travel with him on oh, the wow. circuit. And how I noticed how I used to see a lot of um, Caucasian kids who knew a lot of our history. And I didn't see right. too many African American kids coming about our history, <clears throat> excuse me. So I remember driving back, was in, was in a place called um, Chantilly, Virginia, yes. um, outside of D.C., and I remember coming back to my grandfather, I said, man, it's, it's amazing how so many white kids know our history and our own black kids don't even know our own history. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, he came up with the concept of trying to start something to, it was really a foundation, he just wanted mm -hmm. something to do that can educate the youth right. about Josh Gibson, other great League baseball players, in our area, sure. and that's when we came up and just said, let's do the foundation, came with the mission statement right. and things like that. So the foundation... Well, uh, let's, let's take, let's rewind the script a little bit. Mm -hmm. So you're a basketball player. Basketball player. Robert Morris, what year are you Robert Morris? 87. 87. Okay. 89. Now, what, and you, you're doing baseball pretty much now with the Josh Gibson. Yep. So was baseball part of your nah. youth development oh, at all? Wow. Or? <laughs> No, no, no. I never. You know, I played baseball little league. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, just like everybody else played baseball, okay. but I didn't play baseball in high school. Okay, didn't play in college. Um, Were you a fan of watching baseball? Of or? course. I mean, you know, I grew up watching, of course, Willie Stargell, yeah, okay. you know, okay. Mel Oliver, all those guys. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, Barry Bonds. You know, of course, you're a baseball fan. You know, back then, I mean, the team was better now, yes. but we was losing for a while. For a while, I mean, <laughs> a few years yeah. ago. But, <laughs> When I was growing up, yeah. we were good, right. you know, along with right. the Steelers in the 70s. Right. So, a big, of course, a big baseball fan. Mm -hmm. And then, um, but for some reason, my grandfather, Jr. used to teach baseball. He's, he worked for uh, Boyce Park. He used to teach baseball to the kids on Boyce Park okay. in Monroeville. And I never really just, I never got into it. I played okay. it, but yeah. it wasn't a, a sport. Mm -hmm. I didn't know the history of my family okay. back then. I think if I knew more of the history of Josh Gibson back then, okay. I probably did more with baseball. Mm. But... You know, basketball, so basketball got me a free education, yeah. so it worked out. So the family didn't force you to get into the baseball no, you know because what? they knew. You know what? Mm -hmm. My grandfather uh, was a father. My father wasn't around. My grandfather was around. His whole thing was more about just getting into school, whether you okay. play basketball, football, getting to school free. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> whether you play any sport yes. or academically, yes. getting to school free. So yeah. that was the never push to 
play baseball. I mean, he would try to get me out there to play, but I excelled in other sports, football and okay. basketball. So you, if you've yeah. got a child, you sit next to in other sports, you're going to just go ahead and follow You see, that if you're that good in basketball, it's good. anyone who plays D1 and D2 right. basketball is a pretty good right. mm -hmm. pretty good player. And right. they're, how many end up doing it? So they're not going to say, oh, go out and play baseball right. where you're, you're already seeing that talent in basketball. You're right. like, Forget forget about it. Exactly. I, I can't. I can't. Once you're good enough, you want to hit the playgrounds every day because right. mm -hmm. you and I are close to the same age. Well, you hit the playgrounds, right? right? Yep. That was what you were living is playgrounds oh, yeah, at the time when they were on the course. Because we didn't have yeah. technology back then. Right. Right. Our, I said I tell my kids my fun time was outside. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> we didn't have the handheld. We didn't have cell phones. Exactly. Phone exactly. Technology, you yeah. know. What I mean? So. Come home from school, do your chores, do your homework. You outside. Yes. You outside yes. so the lights go out. So, but I get back to a point with my grandfather. I think the reason why he didn't push me or other relatives because he had so much pressure under him. Okay. Because he also played in the Negro Leagues. Right. He went to Schilling. He's a Pittsburgh Public School grad with the Schilling High School. Um, he played overseas and he also played in um, Canada. Oh. So. He had a lot of pressure. He always said he was a he was an average player, but okay. of course being the namesake of Josh Gibson, yes. everybody expected him to be like his father. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was a second baseman, and he got hurt, um, and he played in the Negro Leagues the last two years with the Homestead grades in 49 and 50. So I think the, the pressure, he had to put the pressure on us because yeah. there was a lot of pressure on him, and okay. you see how it affected him. Yeah. So I think, getting back to your point, no, I was never pressured because, I, and, I, and I agree, it, he had a lot of pressure, though. So yeah, a criminal yeah. justice major, grad. Yeah. So you came out of college thinking, what did you want to do? What you were know you what? I was actually doing? looking to law enforcement, like FBI. Okay. I said, if, in no respect to the city police, I got a lot of city police officers. But I said, if I'm going to college for a degree, yeah. <laughs> I'm shooting big. Yeah. Um, right. But um, FBI was looking into that. and um, But then, you know, when my grandfather, we talked and, and we started this foundation. He wanted to do something with the name. And he felt that I was the one who could be able to carry the name. Okay. Right. And you know, the thing about it though, you know, with nonprofits, when you first start off, it's no money. You know, I'm 23, 23, and I want to make some money coming out of school. I ain't yeah. trying to, you know. Sure. But you know what? He was paying me, um, okay. you know, a decent little bit of money that, that kept me happy. Um, so it worked out. It worked out. And I was just telling someone the other day, I would never change it because I think for me, it's more than a job, it's more right. of my family sure. legacy. Sure. Um, yeah. You know, so it's not just about getting a check or it's not just about right. doing X, Y, and Z. This is carrying on a legacy that I'm also preparing yeah. for my family and my kids as well. Mm -hmm. So um, that's the good thing about this, uh, the foundation. It's a family name. Yeah. So you worked for it first before being really Exactly. Involved. So you got to learn the ins and outs. And what did you see from learning about your great-grandfather's heritage and just his lineage and yeah. the, the sport of baseball and everything. that You were a fan of baseball, but you did not know right. as much from well, being part of the this. foundation. Yeah. The one thing I've learned, I mean, there's two ways to look at it, and I tell people this, because you have the family version, which is always good. Right. Yeah. <laughs> then you have, I had a chance to meet a lot of Negro League baseball players right. when I was younger. Wow. And here... My family's version, which is not a bad story. They give you all the good stories right. and great stories and stuff. But here, my thing is I learned a lot just talking to Negro League baseball players right. okay. that were living. And, um, you know, a lot of, if you look at some of the photos, a lot of the guys, that's how I first found out. So long ago, you look like your grandfather. You know, you get the body figure, you get the body statue yeah. of your grandfather. But here, you know, look, look, talking to Monty Irvin, um, Buck Leonard. Mm -hmm. I never had a chance to meet Satchel Paige. Okay. Mm -hmm. But a guy named D Double Duty who died when he was 106 years old. Wow. A guy named Buck O'Neill. Um, hearing those stories about my grandfather. And, and again, when I say the stories, it's more of the stories that's off the field. Right. Because right. everybody know pretty much Josh on the field. Mm -hmm. But how he was off the field as far as how, um, you know, he's a happy-go-lucky guy. Yes. He's very... You know, comedian type guy, uh, very outgoing, mm -hmm. from what I understand. Uh, very generous with his money, giving people money, homeless people. Mm -hmm. okay. um, I was told one time, you know, when he played for the Crawfords, he had a house in the Hill District. But he also had a, and the Crawford Grill had apartments over top of the mm -hmm. uh, Crawford Grill. Yes. So he had an apartment up there, and he would give that out to the people this, who didn't on the street who didn't have a place to oh, stay. Money. He let them stay in his apartment. So a lot of things like that um, that I would hear from Negro League baseball players are some of the stories I genuinely mm -hmm. appreciate. So you fast forward, and to actually sit here and say you had an opportunity to talk to 
the living legends of the Negro League. Yeah. That is really mm, yeah. heavy to grasp mm, yeah, that. Yeah. Um, so how fortunate you were to have that opportunity. But we fast forward, and how did you take and become from just someone inside the Josh Gibson Foundation learning the ins and outs to now becoming the CEO? What was that transition? Did someone mentor you toward that and mm -hmm. say, Sean's it? Well, you know what? Actually, my grandfather, Junior, he died in 2010, so he was around for a little while. Um, when we first came with the concept with the foundation, you, of course, you know, with the whole thing with any nonprofit is yeah. your board. Yeah. You know, you yes. got to have, you gotta have a yes. great board. It yeah. doesn't matter who I am. You know, you got to have a yes. great board. Mm -hmm. And we were blessed in the beginning of our years to have a great board to get everything established, 501c3s, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. legal paperwork, mm -hmm. all yes. those things together. Right. And then... To make it grow, you know, I'm a, I am mean, I'm always thinking of new ideas. I tell people who run nonprofit, you got to have new ideas because funding streams, they only fund exactly. you for certain many programs for so many years. Mm -hmm. So you got to keep coming up with new ideas. Yeah. And that's one of the things I think that we have done with the foundation. We started off strictly with just baseball. Okay. Yeah. And that was like the carrot to get the yes. kids in. Because we know sports will bring kids in. If you say, okay, I got an after school program, they're like, okay, wait. Yeah, wait, yeah, yeah exactly, <laughs> exactly. So baseball was our care to get them. And then once we got them in through baseball, we hit them with the educational components. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, okay, if you want to play baseball, you got to do X, Y, and Z in this. Then once we did that, then we start getting more kids. We start growing. Then we start getting partnerships with Pepsi Public Schools, Duquesne University, mm -hmm. some local universities, um, University of Pitt. Kurt Bruce is on our board, University okay. of Pittsburgh. Okay. You know, so we start building relationships throughout the city. And then we start coming up with different programs. Um, like I said, the one program we have called BOSA, which is called yes. Business Sports Academy, and it's a program that we really, you know, one of our board members hit it on the nose. He said, "Look, we're a sports, we're a sports foundation, so why reinvent the wheel?" Right. So we came up with a sports curriculum for high school kids, mm -hmm. and it teaches kids the high school, I mean, the business side of sports. So we got sports media, sports mm -hmm. marketing, sports yeah. law, okay. sports sales, and sports events. And we just came from, we just took a field trip yesterday to Cal U, okay. who has a great sports manager program up there. And it's through the Pittsburgh Public Schools, and it's through uh, sophomores, juniors, and seniors. Mm -hmm. You get college credits. Okay. You know, so... And then we have those ideas. We have that school program, we have summer camp. So we, we kind of expand yeah. ourselves, but we're not just one dimensional, you know, because people think of us as a, just a baseball program. Right. right. You know, I mean, we're yes, more than just a do. baseball program. So mm -hmm. we do a, like, we go to our website, you see, we do a lot more than just baseball. So, you know, so we're, we, you know, getting back to you, I think how to make it grow is just reinventing, like I said, just keep, keep, just keep exactly. thinking of new ideas. Stepping new outside ideas. of your box. Exactly. Expanding. Exactly. Like the opera. That's another thing outside the box. <laughs> So talk about the opera. Yeah, so, you know, this year is 2016. Um, so next year, 2017, we have two major projects coming on. Okay. One is called Josh Gibson Heritage Park, which is called FedEx Ground Josh Gibson Heritage Park. Thank you, FedEx, um, for their sponsorship. But that will be an actual tourism site. Mm -hmm. And what it's going to be is it's not going to be statues. And that's the thing about technology has changed so much. Yes. Uh, so they're going to be more of on a brick wall, and the statue's actually coming out of the wall like a 3D figure. Oh, wow. These are going to be nice. colorized bronze, and they're going to be lined up. If you're familiar with Station Square to Sheraton, yes. right. so as you come out the Sheraton mm -hmm. Hotel, it's that garage right there. Yes. It's the sidewalk. So they're going to be lined up from okay. one end to the other end. It's going to be eight of them total. And it'll be educational things, so it'll be a kiosk and things like that. It'll be voice activated. Mm. Right. And the one thing that we do, um, we also do a... Um, a Josh Gibson Gala every other year. Mm -hmm. um, our last recipient we honor was Barry Bonds. So we do, we have, we, we videotape everything that we do. So we have sound bites of those guys talking about Josh Gibson. So we'll oh, plug wow. them in. So if we say we have a narrator, say if it's like our, our uh, documentary, we had um, Bill Hillgrove as our yes. narrator. Yeah. So okay. we have Bill Hogar. He'll just lead us. So, okay, well, right. here's, you know, Josh Gibson played for the Homestead Graves. Let's see what Barry Bonds said about Josh Gibson. And you'll hear Barry Bonds' voice come okay. in. That's great. Talk about Josh Gibson. We got, so we got Barry Bonds, Reggie Jackson, Lou Brock, wow. Ron Marshall. We got all those guys on sound bites right. that's going to plug in. So I think that piece there is going to be a little different because it's not actually you talking about the person. Right. Yeah, exactly. You actually got celebrities talking about these guys. All right, yeah. so when we get back, we're going to talk more, Sean Gibson, about the Josh Gibson Foundation and much, much more. You're watching The Neil Haley Show, and we'll be back in just a moment.
Visit the Oliver Miller Homestead, an 18th century reenactment site located just off the circle on Corrigan Drive in South Park. Self-guided tours are available each Sunday from May 1st until December 8th from 1.30 until 4.30 p.m. with guides in 18th century garb located around the grounds to answer questions and to give information. Your tour will begin in a reproduction bank barn where displays give information on the movement west. You will also see the Miller still and learn about the production of whiskey and the importance of it and of the Whiskey Rebellion to this area. Follow the Miller Trail up the path and visit the transportation shed, demonstration shed, forge, a reproduction log house, the original spring house, gardens, and finally end at the stone house. Each month the guides host at least one special event. The homestead is also a great place for tours, tailored to the needs of school-aged children, scout groups, or adults. Visit our website at www.olivermillerhomestead.org for a schedule for the year and much more information on the history of the Miller family, our organization, and pricing information. We're back to the Neil Haley Show. Check me out, hopefully, at neilhaley.com by the time uh, mm -hmm. this airs. I'm hoping, again, this, the logistics of building a second website, taking the education side mm -hmm. and pulling everything else out, mm -hmm. the entertainment side, it's, it's different for me, but it's an unbelievable uh, process. And I'm with Coach Karen Hall. Yes. And Coach, we're talking to Sean Gibson. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's a very interesting story. And it's great to talk about you know, the base current and former baseball right. players that speak highly of your, your great-grandfather. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that really yeah. has to be humbling to know that they really kind of have the history of the game some of them yeah. and understand that. Well, the way we look at it, we do a, um, when we do our gala, we have something called the Josh Gibson Legacy Award, and we give it out to a baseball player. And we've been fortunate to give, have some great players. Like I said, we had Juan Marshall, Lou Brock. Barry Bonds, Reggie Jackson, and, you know, we had Barry Bonds last year. Right. And, you know, it was, you know, people thought, you know, oh, Barry, Barry, Barry. But yeah. I can tell you right now, I met Barry. I've sat with Barry for two days. Mm -hmm. Perfect guy, man. Mm -hmm. I couldn't ask for anything better. Mm -hmm. All the story. I mean, and again, whatever people heard about Barry, until you meet the person, it's exactly. just totally different. Yes. And he even admitted, you know, he, one thing he told me was, he said, you know, people think I'm a whatever, whatever. He said, but you got to realize when the media, when you're a high profile athlete and yeah. the media is constantly in your yes. face, mm -hmm. you don't, you don't, you don't know, you don't know until you're in those shoes. You can't, because right. he said, people, he said, man, I can't go to the store. He said, when I was going through that home run chase, he said, Sean, literally, media was at my house every wow. night. Uh. I couldn't go to the store. He said, my kids were younger then. I couldn't take my kids to school. And he said, you know, as a father, you want to be a regular guy with your kids. Mm -hmm. Right. I understand. He said, I understand the territory it comes, but when it's coming, yeah. he just feels like there's certain things kids are off limit. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're yeah, with your totally kids. Yeah. If I'm with my friends or by myself or I'm even with my wife, okay, but when, when, when this is with my kids, it's off limit. So, I mean, he has some great stories. Um, one quick story was, of course, y'all really familiar with the him and Jim Leland, Jim Leland argument? You're familiar no, with that? No, yeah. I'm not. Okay, well, back, this was Barry played here. This is spring trading, and this is a big argument between Jim Leland and Barry Bonds, and it's a lot of cuss words, and Jim Leland's, like, going off on Barry, like, this yeah. is my team, this is and that. Yeah. So me and Barry's coming from lunch, and I said, well, I had to ask, because Jim Leland was the honorary chair. So I said, <sighs> Jim, do you mind if we play this clip of you and Barry? He said, Sean, I'm fine with that, but ask Barry first. So I asked Barry, and Barry said no at first. He said, why do you want to show that? He said, that's old. It's in the past. You know, me and yeah. Jim moved forward. Then as we get closer to the hotel, he said, you know what, Sean? Yeah, I want you to play it. Because he kind of told me the story behind it. Yes. So we played a clip, and it's all bleep, bleep, bleep. It's, it's so the whole audience yeah. is cry, laughing, right? And so Barry gets up. And when he does his uh, thank you speech, he talks about the award. And basically what he said, I mean, about the video, and basically what he was saying was, the argument was not between him and Jim Leland. Right. The argument happened between him and another coach was arguing. Jim came in and protecting his coach. But I think Beery explained the story, and he said, Skip, you were right. I was wrong. 
And when he said that, I can tell you right now, you can hear a pin drop. It was, I think a lot mm. of people appreciated Barry because nobody expected Barry to admit that he was yes. wrong, sure. number one. That you know what I mean? Sure. But when he gave the story of how everything happened, mm -hmm. he said Skip was sticking up for his coach. Mm -hmm. He was, you know, blah, blah, blah. He apologized to Jim Leland right there in front of everybody. And it was just like silence. Uh, so I think there, yeah. it took a different level, at least the people that was in my audience, yes. took a different level of respect for Barry Bonds. So Major League Baseball mm -hmm. has been very good yeah. to yeah. the Josh Skips and the Foundation via the Pittsburgh Pirates. Mm -hmm. What are some of the ways that they have physically and, and that we can see today? Yeah. Um, you know, I'm familiar with the M and Recreation yep. Center, so some of those things. Yep. So MLB, a few years, well, not a few, 2008, we partnered with the Pirates, um, Pirates Charities for specific, to mm -hmm. do Josh Gibson Field, which is actually the old Ammon Field yeah. where Josh Gibson first started playing. In the Hill oh, District. Wow. In the Hill District, yes. right, where he first mm -hmm. started playing his baseball. Um, so MLB was involved because they have something called BTF, it's called Baseball Tomorrow Fund, so it's the fund okay. that comes from there. So they go around in different cities and they renovate fields. Mm -hmm. For you, because the whole push back then was, and it still is, is trying to get more African American kids to play baseball. Yeah, okay. As right. you know, right now it's about six or seven percent of African Americans yes. playing baseball, right. compared to when we, you know, at one time we had an all minority team, like yeah. 1971, um, with Al Oliver and those yeah. guys. So it's changed a lot. With so the Major League Baseball, they get the Urban Academies. Right. They doing a big push. Exactly. Mm -hmm. With these things, so BTF they goes around different cities and renovate fields. So we were fortunate to get a, a lot of funding from them as well as other local foundations to create Josh Gibson Field. So what they did was get new dugouts, press oh, box, wow. okay. scoreboards, uh, two new fields, uh, concession stand, mm -hmm. and uh, yes. it's been great. It's been great. So the kids enjoy it. Um, you know, so we, we really enjoy being up there. You had a uh, phenom from Philadelphia. Oh, uh, yeah, Can you talk yeah, about yeah, the yeah. Yeah, Monet the, Davis. Yes. Well, we had Monet Davis twice. Before she came a phenom, we okay. played it. Her dad, I mean, her dad, her coach, Steve, is a good friend of mine from Philly. Okay. So when she was 11 years old, mm -hmm. she came down here. And he was telling me about her, right? So I'm like, okay, okay. So she get, they gets off the bus, and we all, our team greets them and everything. We're talking until we play. I said, hey, Monet, how you doing? Now, I knew, I heard she was a better basketball player because yes. they had her on YouTube. Yes. Yeah. So no lie. I'm doing my thing. They're watching the game. I think we were winning, and they start beating us. And um, I'm at the concession stand. So the concession stand is stay here right. and about 30 feet down the field. I got my back turned, and all I hear is this ball hit the glove, right? Mm -hmm. And I turn around, and her bus driver's there. And I say, was that that girl? Uh -huh. You see her braids. Yeah. He said, yeah, that's her ace. I said, wow. So I go down there, right? And then, you know, she was good, but yeah. then, of course, the next year later, yes, and two years phenomenal. later, she blows up. Yeah, national scene. Yes, and she's on Sports Illustrated, but then we played them again last year mm -hmm. down in Manchester right. Field. Um, but, of course, everybody wanted her to pitch. She didn't mm -hmm. pitch. And it was like paparazzi down there, wow. man. Um, it was probably one of the best that ever happened down in Manchester. Mm -hmm. It was so many people there. Wow. I mean, she's very humble, um, very well educated. She goes to a great school. She has a baseball car, so one of the coaches was giving really? her her baseball car to pass out to our team, right? right? So she was like, no, no, no. So he passed out because she's like, she's kind of shy. Uh -huh. she, she don't, I mean, she know she know how to embrace the attention, but she don't ask for the attention. Exactly. So she's kind of shy, so she didn't want to like pass out her car. So I mm -hmm. said, I'll pass them off for you here, get everybody. Sure. But you know, the, I think again, the name Josh Gibson. I try to explain to our right. kids, you will be in certain, you'll get to meet certain people get to be in certain opportunities because of the name Josh yes. Gibson. And our kids, they'll never forget that. You know, it was a great experience. People that have played near in, like, baseball with the foundation and things mm -hmm. like that, have any of them gone on to play in No, we, just the, got, we, got, one, we got one famous player right now, and that's DeJuan Blair. That's it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's Even though DeJuan one. played basketball, he played in our baseball program. He's okay. a kid. He's a kid. But your foundation... It's an opportunity for the youth mm -hmm. to not only through a sport, but to from the educational side right. to being able to learn how to engage with people. So it's more of teammates, yeah. business, right. everything, all the different right. things that come. Yeah, I mean, we like I said again, we use the sports as a carrot, right. but we open up. We got so many opportunities. We got, like I said, we have summer camps, after school program, we have a high school curriculum. Mm -hmm. Um, when we have our galas, we get our kids involved with volunteering. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things I try to expose our kids to is volunteer. You know, right. give back to the community. So anything that we got going on, mm -hmm. fundraisers, we get our right. kids involved in that. So it's more of just, like you said, the foundation. We're really teaching these yes. kids 
right. how to be adults when they come of age. Right. So it's more of a mentoring 24-7 mm -hmm. as well as getting involved. You know, we help them with coaches, you know, resumes, okay. job interviews. That's great. You know, we do professional dress days. Mm -hmm. So they got a lot. It's, it's more than just sports. So the leadership uh, component, I'm always loving hearing about how you're able to help kids tra transform mm -hmm. into this rough little kid and they age into the program and then you can see some of the transformation happen happening through leadership. Can you speak about that? Perfect example. We got a kid right now at Westinghouse. His name is Keyshawn, I can't forget Keyshawn, Keyshawn Johnson. He was a 10th grade, man. This guy was a knucklehead. Right. Just a knucklehead. Keyshawn, now he got the knee scholarship. Now from the mm. transition from 10th grade to he's a senior now. So we'll okay. tell you, he got a scholarship from knee. He got a football scholarship to Cheney. So he's a football mm. linebacker. So he okay. got a full right. ride to Cheney for football. Yeah. And he's going to study forensic science. Wow. So you take a kid that who was in the 10th grade, who's a knucklehead, after having a conversation with him several times during his sophomore mm -hmm. year, as how people portray African American right. males, to see that transition from a 10th yeah. grader to now, and exactly. see yeah. a scholarship, and he's going to study mm. forensic science. Right. Wow. That's Good. what you call leadership. Just and, and all it takes sometimes is a conversation right. with kids because somebody just want to have them. Some kids just need someone to talk to, and you know, you talk to them, you give them some advice, be there for them. And I tell our kids, you can talk to me about anything. It could be sports, money, right. girls, whatever. Yeah. It's not just because, you know, you have something to the foundation exactly. of scholarship. Don't talk about, we can talk about anything. Sure. Right. And I think as an African-American male, we have a lot of African-American males in our program as well as females. You know, it's good for them to just relate to me because, you know, I come from public housing. I went to a single parent. Um, I went to college on a scholarship. So I've been there and yes. done it with some of these kids that have done it. So I can, I can relate yes. to some of the things they're going through. Yes. So, and that's, so that's the ultimate goal of the foundation is pretty much definitely to, to, to get Our ultimate the, the, goal is to have future leaders. That's the great thing because a lot that's of times wonderful. people use the foundation with sports and then yeah. sports comes first. It seems right. like it's education and leadership yeah. and right. the game of life. Exactly. That's, that's yeah. what it seems yeah. like for, for sure. Yeah. Now, Sean, best place to find information on the Josh Gibson Foundation, all those places. Where can we go? Yep, just go to our website, which is joshgibson.org. And we also have a Facebook page, too. It's Facebook, Josh Gibson uh, Foundation, our Facebook page. Yes. It's, uh, that's the only two. We're not on Twitter. We don't do Twitter. <laughs> yes, uh, interesting. That's the one that's Pittsburgh's not catching up to because it's become the one that. Well, Twitter, you got like, it's like you got it. No, all. no, see, uh, you know, every, every, a, you have an expert like place, myself on Twitter, yeah. and yeah. I got my team tweeting right now, yeah. syndication all over the place. My phone's just you blowing tweet, up. So right. say, yeah. yeah, I tweet he's all the time, though. All, all over the place, media. and yeah. I'm all over social media. Yeah. But yeah. it's an important part because of just the, the awareness. And but the, one thing the, we are looking to do is, we just talked about this yesterday, is that we're going to actually have our high school students create our own social media outlets. So they'll do our own social media for Twitter, Instagram, uh, Facebook. Then they, what's that, Snapchat? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They, I mean, these kids, yeah. and that's the thing I was telling our teacher. I said, look, let's have the kids do it because yeah. they know yes. all that stuff. They know it better than we do. Exactly. I mean, they, these kids know how yeah, to do all that stuff. So I said, look, let's set up something. They know how to create the content. They know other things. But the one thing that I've seen to everybody Finding followers, getting people. That's right. the most important, biggest thing. Social media. It, that, that's where it is. It's, yeah. you got to get find that audience yes. and find the right target audience. Right. Well, thanks for coming on. Thank I really you. appreciate Thank that. You. And uh, Thank you. best Thank of luck you. in all the ventures. And, again, that was the Neil Haley Show. We'll see what information comes up very, very soon, uh, all the different things going on me. Just follow me at Total Tutor right now. I'm telling you, I tweet all the time. You will know all the major celebrity interviews from everything. Again, this is already guess, going on uh, my fourth interview of the day, and I have about three more to go today. So it's been a very, very interesting day. And every day is check me out on all the different social media sites and watch Neil Haley's show next week and listen to the Total Education Network Total Celebrity Show every day. Take care, everyone.